Hello. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Apostle. Welcome to another episode that is working for me. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all on this platform once again. And if you are seeking to have your spirit renewed, refreshed, discover all the truths of the word, then you're in the right place this morning. So all glory to God this morning. We have a special guest with us. It's a wonderful man of God who's planted over a hundred churches all over the globe. So join me to welcome Apostle Colin Mezigoum this morning as he shares the truths of the word with us. Apostle, over to you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for that kind introduction. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Amen. I'd like to go to the book of Proverbs, the 13th chapter, Proverbs chapter 13. And verse number 15, it's a scripture verse that I've read before. And today I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into it. It says, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressor is hard. So you have uh, two choices here. Choice number one, favor. Choice number two, hard. You can pick one. You can pick favor or you can pick hard. Good understanding, give it favor. So in order for you and I to be the recipients of favor, we have to do better than merely understand. We have to have good understanding. There is understanding, there is lack of understanding, there is misunderstanding, and there is good understanding. I never thought understanding had so many shades of coloring to it. Good understanding, whatever it is that you understand, you must understand it according to my African brothers. Well, well, oh. <laughs> so good understanding procured favor. It gives favor, it releases favor. But the absence of understanding programs hardship. Have you been having hardship lately? All right. We're going to address that. And today, hopefully, we are going to put such a beating on hard and hardship that it disappears from your life for an extended season. Glory be to God. I'm going to define what favor is. I'm going to give it seven different uh, definitions. And then I'm going to give you some biblical illustrations or stories of people that procured favor in that particular aspect that, that uh, the definition talks about. And then we are going to pray. So I'm going to be interrupting to pray when I'm done with one aspect, two aspects, so that we can deal with whatever is attempting to program hardship into your life. I remember this friend of mine, he's still a friend of mine. He was sick, he's sick with cancer. And they gave him X amount of weeks to live and then they came down to X amount of days to live. And he was asked, how could you still be so upbeat with all of this that's going on here? You think the doctors are lying? He said, no, I don't think the doctors are lying. And they said, but you're sick and you're trying to get well. And he said, no, I am not the sick trying to get well. 
I'm the well that the devil is trying to make sick. <laughs> and that guy, he went down to 24 hours. He said, Mr. Pastor Man, you're going to be gone in a day. And when the day went, and the second day came, and the third and the fourth, they came testing him, checking him. That man began to put on weight. That man is alive and well today. That man is cancer free. But his words remained with me. I'm not the sick trying to get well. I am the well that the devil is trying to make sick. And so sometimes you have to have that moment of confrontation when you decide to believe God or to let life and uh, experts give you their opinion and you can live and die on man's opinion. Whose report do you believe? The, the, the song retorted, we shall believe the report of the Lord. His report says, I am healed. I am well, I, whatever, whatever, whatever. So here I go. I am defining the word favor. There's no point in us wanting to say we want favor, uh, favor be upon me. And we don't know what we are talking about. So we've got to define it. We got to know exactly with specificity what we are mentioning here because favor is going to come upon us today to day. When we know what we're talking about, the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by what you hear and hear and hear and hear and keep on hearing. You've got to keep listening to the thing that will activate your faith. And don't interrupt your faith growth by involving other voices because the third voice always comes to disrupt the two voices that are in your spirit. Your own voice that's saying yes to God and God's voice that's trying to grow your faith. The third voice always comes to bring disruption. Know that the third voice always comes to bring disruption. And we're not going to have anything to do with that third voice. Favor is goodwill. Favor is goodwill. Uh, back in the time, they used, to, they used to bid you Godspeed. Godspeed. Most like we say farewell, have a good day, have a nice day, enjoy your trip. They would say Godspeed. Goodwill. Whatever is being willed for you, it's good. Favor is the goodwill of the almighty God and favor is the goodwill of humanity where you are concerned. They wish you well, they wish you success. They want good things to happen to you. All right, number two, favor is a kind act, an act that is one of kindness. We don't have to look far to know that our world is inundated with unkindness, with cruelty and cruel acts and vicious words. As the people of God, we have to take the opposite approach. And we have to know to speak a word fitly spoken like apples of gold in pictures of silver. The Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. And so kindness, a kind act. When last have you had a kind act done towards you? We are so accustomed to the viciousness of our world that when kindness comes along, we look at it suspiciously like, all right, what is the ulterior motive that this joker has here? Who are they pretending to, to, to try to fool? Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on me. <laughs> and we are, we are suspicious of kind actions because that's not, that's not the area, or that's not our comfort zone. We are not comfortable with it. We are comfortable with uh, cruelty and harsh terms, hard words, favor, favor, 
the thing about life is the destiny that has to unfold for us, all of us, for it to really come into fruition, it will demand a high degree of goodwill and kind action to get us there. You can't fulfill your destiny, your calling, by just the things that you're able to manifest with your two hands and your brilliant brain. You're going to need an outside agency, outside assistance, apart from you, when I say outside assistance and outside agency, I mean, apart from what you are doing to make your destiny unfold, all of the efforting, all of the creative ideas, all of your willing hands and the sweat equity that you put into it, when all of that is combined, what you have got to manifest for destiny to be fulfilled for you is way more than what you are able to bring to the table. There has to be ever so often outside help, outside assistance, outside kindness, outside goodwill. Outside of you, people must watch and say, all right, let's help this guy. Let's, let's take them over the top. I remember when we were building World Vision in David Street. We were a small church at that time. And the finances, when they came in, they went immediately to material for construction and to paying the workmen that were working. We came at one time to the end of ourselves where we had done the foundation, we had done the columns, we had done the perimeter beams, we had even done the roof, but the floors, we ran out of cash and we were not going to the bank for any loans. So we were doing a self-help type project. And here's where goodwill comes in. A gentleman we did not know was taking keen interest in what we were doing and he owned a lumber yard. He came up to the steps of the building because it was a two-story building. The church would be upstairs and other things would be happening at a lower level. And he measured <clears throat> the length and width of the building. And he knew the kind of material that would be needed to do the floors. Now, I did not know. A Wednesday night, we were doing Bible study. We were above the market, Kitty Market. And in the heights of the Bible study, a sister asked, Reverend, what are we going to do about the floor? To which I replied, without even thinking, next week, this time, we will be away from this market and we will be in the building because the floor would have been taken care of. And she, she laughed loud and long. And when she was done laughing, I said, and when the floor is finished, we're going to ask you to be the first one to go up the steps and walk through on the floor. And she laughed even louder a second time. And I let, I let, let the, uh, the laughter go. I joined in the laughter myself. And then we continued with the Bible study. That was the Wednesday night. The Thursday morning, as my custom was, I was there at the work site. Even when there is nothing to do, it's like I was willing the building, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up and finish. Come on, where's the cement? Where, like I'm talking to, to the concrete columns and walking around the place and making decrees and declarations. So the gentleman came and stopped at the front of the, the building that was being constructed. And he said, I'd like to talk to the pastor. He said, all right, give me a minute. Let me go get him. And I went to the back and put on more presentable clothes <laughs> and came back out. And he looked at me and said, you look like the guy that just went in. I said, yes, we resemble. And the two of us had a good laugh. And the next thing I see him, he's waving down a truck, stopping the truck. And he told the man, this is the place. So in view of the fact that I'm in charge, and I did not order any material. I don't know what he's talking about. I said, you sure you got the right place? He said, yes. And the men started taking in the one by four material for the, for the floors. 
And he said, I measured some extra just in case, because sometimes when the wood is not properly cured, it can bend and twist, and sometimes it doesn't fit uh, quite as straight as it should fit. I said, what are you talking about? Who ordered this material? And he said, nobody. I've been passing this place, and every time I pass, something in my heart tells me to help, 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 help these young people, help. Because I noticed that it's just a few of you, and a lot of them that are working are children after 3 o'clock when school is done. So I know that um, you guys don't have all the money and all the people and whatever, and I want to help. So I asked the gentleman, I said, what church are you from? <laughs> I assumed that only a Christian would want to do something like this to assist the work of God. And he said in the colloquial language, me not Christian, me a Hindu. But God talked to me. <laughs> and then he went off, he said, when you, when you get the money, I'll pass and see what we can do and you can pay me there. And we called up the carpenters that we had in our, in our church. And we did the floor. It was enough material to do the floor and some extra was left back. He was right. Some of the wood that he had put to cure had cured, but they had bent and twisted in different shapes. And so they could not be used. And I called up different people and told them, we're going to have church at David Street this week. Call up people that you have their phone number. And that Sunday morning, I asked the sister who laughed loud to come and take a walk on the floor that was finished. When the service was done, the question was, Pastor, where did we get the money to, um, to do the floor, to buy the material for the floor? And I told them what happened. And people started coming back. They went home and came back. They went home and came back. They went home and came back. All the money they had under the pillow and in the mattress and in their shoe and in, wherever they were hiding, you know, everybody got their own hiding place on the bank or whatever. And the next week when the man passed, we were able to pay him for all the material that he had brought. Every now and then you need some assistance that can get you there at a faster rate of speed. He was paid for the material for his initiative, but at the time when we needed help and we needed it badly, we were broke, we had nothing else to draw from, we had no uh, good benefactor out there. The organization was not doling out monies to us to help along. And so goodwill, you need goodwill, you need outside agencies to come alongside you ever so often to assist you, to get you over the hill, to get you across the river, to get you across the bridge, to get you in a place of victory when you should have had victory months and months and months ahead, but you have the victory now because somebody had goodwill towards you. Favor is goodwill. Yes. So Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray now that goodwill would be extended to every last one of our listening audience that everyone that listens to this message that when they come to this point and this prayer is being prayed that goodwill goodwill will erupt like a volcano in their life and the situation that has them back in the corner the situation that has them at pause the situation that has them at stop the situation that scoffs at them mocks at them and tells them you're not going anywhere more than where you've gone. You're not going one step further. That God, you would send goodwill, goodwill, goodwill. We speak and pray for the release of outside agencies, men and women. They don't even have to be born again. That will hear the voice of God and respond immediately, positively and immediately. And do what the Spirit will tell them to do. We know that we cannot do all that has to be done to get to our destiny. We know that we don't have all that it takes to arrive at the place on time. We know that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And except the Lord watch the city, the watchman stays awake, but in vain. And so we don't want to be 
doing an exercise of vanity. We want things to happen and we thank you and we praise you for the release. And we have received help and goodwill from men and women that will come our way to be destiny helpers to the glory of God. We say it is so in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen, amen, and amen. We thank you that kind acts, kind action will erupt. Kind deeds will be done. Amen. And those who have amen. not been months and for years will suddenly feel the urge to do a kind act for us. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. Favor is goodwill. Favor is a kind act. I declare over our lives that kindness is everywhere. Unstoppable kindness is everywhere. Unbeatable kindness is everywhere. Unmatchable kindness is everywhere happening to us again and again. We receive it in Jesus' name. Favor is friendly regard. You're regarded in a friendly manner. Favor is preferential treatment. You are preferred ahead of other people. Preferential treatment. Preferred. You take the first spot. You were there late. You are at the back of the line. The owner of the business comes and holds your hand and takes you to the front of the line and asks you, what do you need? And gives you all that you need and uh, cut the price in half and then send his driver to take you home with the grocery or whatever it is that you purchase from him. Favor. 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 Favor is an advantageous connection. David, when he fought for Saul, he fought Saul's enemies. Saul was the tallest man in the nation, head and shoulders above everybody else. So Saul would have been the ample person to go out and fight Goliath, but he was scared. <laughs> he was afraid of his own shadow and wouldn't go and fight. So David now, went and fought Saul's enemies and defeated the main one that had insulted the nation for 40 days. And Saul's army won the fight because David put Saul in a position of advantage now that the Philistines did not have their champion. Glory to God. May God send someone that will see the battles that you have, instinctively know what to do, and defeat the problematic situations that have arisen and have long life and uh, crazy glue stickability. They wouldn't leave you alone. Yeah, may God send a warrior to take care of your enemies. That as scripture said one time, you shall not need to fight in this battle, but you shall stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. May the enemies that you see today vanish from your life tomorrow about this time. And when Saul got in his mental state of depression and everything else, Jonathan warned David of Saul's plot to end his life. We see reciprocity of favor happening here. David fought off Goliath for Saul. And Jonathan would warn David when his father was in his de de demonic state and wanted to kill him. And so Jonathan warned David, May God send those that will warn you of impending disaster, warn you Amen. of things that fly ahead, warn you of things that you don't even see and have no idea that a hit has been placed on your head and someone has already been paid to take you out. But somebody who has the information will give you warning, will protect you, will speak a word to cause you to be hidden in the cleft of the rock. A favor is an advantageous connection. It's a connection that gives you the edge. It's a connection that gives you the advantage. It's a connection that makes you win when you should have lost. It's a connection that gives you victory when you should be wallowing in defeat. Somebody comes alongside and the two of you put 10,000 to flight. May God raise your David up wherever he is, wherever she is. To come and war in your place. To come and fight in your behalf. 
to come and take up the task that has worn you out or is wearing you out and you don't have another punch to throw. You are punched out. You don't have another defense to put up. You can't even defend. You are helpless right now. You can't even defend yourself. But along comes this David. Along comes your Jonathan. Along comes the one who takes up your fights and fights them to the place where they win and then hand you the trophy. Oh, glory to God. May you have trophies that you actually didn't fight all the way for. You may have fought five rounds and you didn't have the gas to fight five more. And this person jumped in the ring and said, I got five rounds I can offer. Put them up, put them up, let's go. Glory to God. He said, well, Reb, you know, these things don't happen. I just told you a Hindu man measured the building, brought enough material and excess, and then said, whenever you get the money, and in, the way he said it was, don't be in a rush. I understand that you're going through this building process and you don't have what it takes, but I'm willing to wait. Whenever you get it, you bring it to me. Glory to God. And that kind of thing has happened more than once. More than once. There's another incident I remember. I was speaking at, uh, across the bridge at uh, Reverend Marlon Hestick's church. A woman came to me and I had some blessings for her. I had known the family for years and years. And she, when I put the money in her hand, she slapped it away. And she said, I don't want that. I want a word from God. Now we're talking US currency here. And in that part of the world, when you reach out US, people don't slap it away. But she said, no, I don't want that. I want a word from God. And it was not the first time, it was not the second time, but this sister, whenever she comes around me, she, she, she seemed to have this ability to pull a prophetic word out of me that I don't have. And she would say something like, I know the Lord will give you a word in a minute or two. And she threw up her hand and started speaking in tongues and carrying on. And I'm looking at her like, this woman is, she's a, she's a fool. What do you, I, I'm not, I just got up. I haven't got the boo-boo out of my eyes yet. And she wants a prophetic word, but it never failed. Every time she wants a word, the Lord will start stirring me up. And I start opening my mouth and things come out. And then I'm trying to grab it back and stuff it down my throat. But it comes to pass. I started prophesying. I said, tomorrow, by this time, I named the time, a truck will pull up. And all the material you need for the house you're building. I did not know she was building a house. And she and her sons and her husband had worked that house, work, 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 until there was no more funds left. And the building was stalled up. And it came to a point where people were laughing at them like, you know, you all start and couldn't finish. Yeah, yeah, Ray, Ray. And that prophetic word, tomorrow, this truck will pull up. And she said, that's what I want. Now you can go your way. I went into the service went on the stage and sat down. And I'm thinking, boy, she really bold. And I'm saying, Lord, you better come true because I didn't make that up. The next day, seven o'clock, service started five to seven. She comes walking in, big smile on her face. And she's trying to get my attention. Finally, when she got my attention, she said, guess what? I said, the truck came and she shook her head. She said, yes, yes. Similar story. This man saw the family in the struggle heard the people mocking at them and decided he was going to take the mockery away. He too had a, a business that dealt with timber. He too went in and took a, a measurement, a guesstimate of what they would need and then put some more on top of that. He too sent his truck with the workmen to take the material in. And he said, tell, ask them if they need anything else to let you know and I will provide it. They can pay me whenever they get the money. Who does that? God can send you a favor in the nick of time. They got their house finished. And uh, when the service was done, I went up to her. I said, I still have that, um, that thing that I was giving you. And you slapped my hand away. She said, well, now I can take that. <laughs> and I put my hand in my pocket and gave it to her. What a blessing. I like to bless people that God is obviously blessing so that I can get a blessing back. When God is blessing something, you bless the same thing so that blessings can come to you because you are blessing what God is blessing. Oh, yes. She had a connection that she knew nothing about. This man was observing how they work hard 
to get their building finished and they got it finished on, on the nick of time. Favor does happen in this cruel world. People are touched by God. Their hearts are touched by God to do you a solid with no strings attached, with no reservations, with no ulterior motive. You ask them, why are you doing this? They don't know. They don't know why they're doing it. The first property we bought in Canada here, the woman gave us a receipt for $13,000 that we did not give her. And she said, take it to the bank, the receipt, and I will tell the bank to give you the loan. I took the receipt to the bank. The bank looked at me like, how come you didn't put this money in your Scotia account? And gave us the loan to purchase her son's house. The person that gave me the, the receipt was her son's house. She had gotten her real estate license. It was the first house that she was selling. She said she wanted to get her feet wet in the real estate market to sell a property. And she don't know why I am the person that she picked to sell this property to. And she was bending like a pretzel to make things easy for me to buy this property. And we bought it. In a, in a foreign country, without all the papers in place, all of our land aid and permanent residence status and Canadian citizenship, none of that was in place. But yet God, at a time when we needed a favor like nobody's business, got this Italian woman and she's, while she's doing it and signing, she said, why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? But I'm there saying that keep on doing it, keep on, fingers crossed, keep on doing it, keep on doing it until we moved into that place. And when, we, uh, when it was time to sell, we got a pretty good, pretty good price for it. Double what we paid and a, and a few thousands more. To God be the glory. Favor does happen in this life and you deserve one. You deserve one. So Father, we release to Ivana and to Vonda advantageous connection. People that will come into their life and give them the edge a David that will fight off their Goliath. A Jonathan that would give them information that warns them of sticky situations up ahead that they will be able to avoid. Hey, 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 hey. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let God arise and let the adversary be scattered. Let every place where the enemy has a vice, a vice grip, where nothing seems to be happening, where you have done all that you can do, and yet it has moved to a certain stage, and it's almost like an immovable object is now standing in your way. And it's time for a breakthrough. It's time for a breakout. It's time to break forth. Let the anointing of breakthrough come upon us, we pray. Thou power of God Almighty, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, move in our behalf. Let David Amen, in the name of Jesus. Yes, let it happen to us. Let us be the recipients of preferential treatment. We know mm -hmm. that relatives and friends. We know that there are people that they have known for years and years that could get this help, that need the help that they are helping us with. But somehow we are the preferred client that they chose to be a blessing to. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen. You said in your word, your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. So we still have to bear the yoke and we still have to carry the burden. But the yoke is easy. We declare now, according to your prophetic intent and word, that a season of easy is breaking out, has broken out over our lives. You're taking away the hard. You're taking away the difficult. You're taking away the problematic. You're taking it away. You're ushering us into a season of ease. Your yoke is easy. We welcome easy. We chase away hard. We welcome easy. Easy. Hey, easy. We're over here. Come on over here. 61 Banbridge Crescent. Come on over here. You got to call your address and call easy to come to your house. Hey, 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 hey. Excuse me when I say, hey, hey, hey. That's when I'm really feeling the, I'm feeling the rocker shocker right now. Yes, yes, yes. Right yes. ahead. D, we're over here. Come on over. Come on. Come and stay. Come and live. Come spend a month or two or three. Come. 
We declare easy has come. We release easy. We welcome Jesus easy. Name. Mm -hmm. I brought the light, he said. We welcome the light. We release the burdensome yes. heaviness and the weight that are so easily beset us. And we command. In Jesus' name. Light will come. Light will come. Light Light will come. Yes, Lord. We have to deal with will not be burdensome to lift. We can carry it in one hand. We mm -hmm. declare. We decree that light and easy is happening now. It's happening now. Burden easy. Yoke is easy. Burden is light. The yoke is easy. The burden is light. We welcome easy and light into our lives now. We welcome it. Amen. We welcome it. It is ours. It is our destiny. Amen. 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 Yes. Yes. It is breaking up now. And it's going to last. For years and years and for years. For years, amen. Amen. For years. It's going to last for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. Yes. It's going to last for years and years and years and years and years and years and years. That's amen. for me. That's for me. Last year. Easy has come. Light has come. It has come. Hardship is over. Hardship is over. We have dealt with the hard. We know how to deal with hard. We have eaten hard for breakfast. We were not afraid of hard. We stayed on hard. We endured hardness as a good soldier. And now our season of change from hard and enduring has arrived. We declare it. Amen. Light burdens have come. We receive them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Preferential treatment. To assist and to support. To assist and to support. When you have favor, you get assistance and support. Somebody to hold up your hand. Israel needed Moses to confront Pharaoh. To confront Pharaoh for them and to get them freedom. Moses needed the men of Israel to hold up his hand when the battle was being lost because they couldn't see Moses. Glory to God. Nations need your gifts to be delivered. Nations need your gift to be delivered. God has raised you as an agent of assistance and as a person that can support his mandate for nations across the globe. Yes, you have a word in your mouth that can deliver a nation. You have a word in your mouth that can deliver a family. You have a word in your mouth that can deliver an institution. You are their source of support. You are their system of assistance. Yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Samson was going to assist Israel to get victory with the jawbone of an ass that became a weapon of mass destruction. You may have something in your hand that doesn't look like it can do much, but this is the season where jawbones will turn into weapons of mass destruction. Where the little that you have will do so much, it will shock you and shock those that are around you. Say not, I just have a jar of oil, because that jar of oil will become a business that will get you out of the debt and get you into a place of ease, both you and your son. The blessing that's mm -hmm. right now will be sufficient to get you out of debt and to be a source of help and blessing to others who are depending on you. Yes, favor has come. The season of favor is here. Yes, Gideon must defeat his Midianites, Gideon. Yes, and it's going to happen. Favor, it means to gain approval to gain approval. Here she comes with her broke self. Here she comes, she had, her husband had died. Here she comes, her brother-in-law had died. Here she comes, her father-in-law had died. And yet she keeps coming. Her mother-in-law is bitter from Naomi, the sweet one, to Mara, the bitter one. And yet for all, she would not stop coming. You've got to keep coming. You've got to keep pressing towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God which is in Christ Jesus. Don't let the enemy see you sweat and don't speak a negative word concerning where you are. Ruth was going to meet up with this guy named Boaz, one of my favorite Bible stories. She got a rich man to look out for her interests. Yes, yes, assistance and support. I'm saying favor is assistance and support. When Boaz saw her, something about her work ethic, her mannerism, the way she carried herself, he told the men on the job that worked under him. Nobody is to mess with her. Nobody is to test her. Nobody is to touch her. Nobody is to give her a hard time. Nobody is to hustle her. 
Nobody is to try to have sex with her. Nobody is to mess around her. I am her benefactor. I'm going to be her aid, her assistance, her help. He didn't stop there. So what he did there, he made provision for her. The first thing is he protected her. He released protection over her. The second thing was he made provision for her. He told those who were bringing in the sheaves that when they see her in the field, they must deliberately, intentionally drop some of the grain and the wheat that they had in front of her so that she don't have to go around to the fringes and the edges to get up the stuff that was left handfuls on purpose. And so he created protection for her. He released provision for her so that when she went home, her mother-in-law would ask, how did you get all of this? And she couldn't really get the story together to tell her, but that the women and the men that work with Boaz, they were leaving handfuls of, of, on purpose so that she could get it. Yes, Naomi, now this bitter old woman, was a source of assistance, was a source of support. Naomi gave her information. Ruth, being a Moabitess damsel, had no idea of the culture and the norms of Israel. And so she needed somebody to give her some information to shine her ahead, to brighten her eyes, to make her know that Boaz was a kinsman, that Boaz was in line to be a kinsman redeemer, that she could be married to Boaz if she played her cards right, that if she washed her dress and washed herself and perfumed her hair and lay at the feet of Boaz, and when he got up, if he got up, she must keep it a secret if he wants it to be kept a secret. Ya, ya, re, re. All of the information she needed to capture this good, rich, godly man was given to her by Naomi. Oh, glory to God. She got protection. She got provision. She got pertinent information that would make her the wife of Boaz. When she came, she was picking up at the corners of the field. She was a maid, a helpless girl, a helpless damsel, a husbandless, father-in-lawless woman, two women, the weakest of society, scrunching out a living by the grace of God and by the generosity of Boaz and the people that dropped them handfuls on purpose. And today she is the maid and an ordinary worker on the field. And tomorrow she's the mistress and the co-owner of the field that is owned by Boaz. Yesterday they were giving her handfuls on purpose and today she is paying their salary because of the help that she got from Boaz, because of the assistance that she got from Naomi, because of the support that she got from the men and women on the field who gave her a break because Boaz commanded that it should be so. May God send assistance and support your way. May God send your Boaz. May God yes. send your Naomi. May yes. God send your yes. relevant, pertinent information that will fast track your destiny and get you to be mistress Boaz faster than you would have thought. Hallelujah. May God be the wealthy, godly man who loves the very dust that you walk on and will not sleep until he has proposed and gotten his yes and is preparing to make you his mistress to the glory of God. Somebody better shout a hallelujah. Amen. I am hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the single ladies, all the single ladies, all the single ladies, put your hand up. Hallelujah. <laughs> Look how shy she is. She did barely put her hand and pull it back down so quick. Yes, I'm saying it today. That God would, would, would send your Boaz. Your Boaz would see you. The one that is the destiny one. The one that is the heaven sent one. The one that is a progressive one. The one that's hardworking. Mm -hmm. Business oriented. The one that can see a woman and not want to take advantage of her just because she's in need. The one, that one, that's the one I'm talking about. May God open doors of destiny in this program today, today. May favor erupt, erupt in your life. Hallelujah. Yes. Erupt in your singleness. Erupt, yes. erupt, erupt. Yes. I Amen. Favor to the glory of God. Hey, 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 in hey. In Jesus' name. Uh, yes, rock Lord. Rock glory to God. Glory to God. Esther put her life on the line for her people to be saved. Walked in to see the king when she was not even called. Favor is goodwill, one. Favor is a kind act, two. Favor is friendly regard, three. Favor is preferential treatment, four. You get favor when you get assistance and support. 
Five, you get favor when you gain approval. Six, yes, Ruth gained the approval of Boaz, though she were a stranger. Yes. And then favor means to give you an advantage. Seven. And number eight, when favor comes, you are afforded a desirable result, a result that you desire. Bartimaeus said, Lord, if you will, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said, I will. To afford a desirable result, a result that you have desired and desired and desired, and it has eluded you and eluded you and eluded you. But today, today, we are speaking for Not a release anymore. of the desired result. No more. Yes. No more no hard. More. <laughs> no more hard. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. It should have taken longer. But it got done at a faster rate of speed. To afford a desirable result. These Midianites with Gideon were reaping Gideon's crops and they were farming in a cave and threshing their wheat in a cave, which is supposed to be done outdoors where the wind can help to take away the chaff and the grain would land and they would pound the grain into fine flour, but none of that. You talk about predicament, that's what they were in. Gideon's house was the smallest in the tribe. So he was not Mr. Wonderful and the one to get the job done. But they were praying for a specific result and a specific end. They were telling God how they wanted things to end up. And some of you, that's where you are right now. You, you have told God already, Lord, this is how I'd like to see things end up. I don't have all that it takes. I don't have the assistance. I don't have the skills. I don't have the money. I don't have the friends. I don't have the contacts. All I have is you. All I have is you. All I have is you. I prayed that prayer quite a few times. Lord, I can't do this. I, I don't know what to do next. I've done all that is humanly possible. I've spent myself to broke. I've been conned. I've been lied on, talked about, misused, mistreated, dog held in suspect. And now I got nothing left hmm. but you. You're all I have. And then That's the Lord will reply, I'm all you need, son. I'm not only all you have, I'm all you need. Watch me work this out. Mm. Watch me work this out. Oh, glory to God. I got stories, man, but we don't have time. Of times when I should have failed miserably and failed publicly. And somehow, just in the nick of time, Desired result. The desired result. The desired result. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We're going to pause to pray for the desired result. Gideon was told to gather his army. 52,000 came to fight with Gideon. That's a good, seizable army, even though they were hopelessly outnumbered. 52,000, that's, that's, I can, I can do it. I can do it. I can do that. I can do 52,000. And then the Lord said, the men that are with you are too many for me to win the victory. Tell those who are afraid to go home. And he watches the army dwindle. The men that you have with you are too many for me. They're not too many for you, but they're too many for me. I want to get a victory in this case 
that it would be obvious to everybody and their mother-in-law that this was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eye. There was no way you could win with the amount of men that you had. And when God has whittled him down to 300, Sometimes God would stack the deck against himself so that when the victory is won, everybody knows this was the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eye. 300 are left. Those who were careless with their drinking of the water at the creek put down their swords and dug their head into the water and were lapping it up. The Lord said, send them home. They are too careless in the battle. They know that the Midianites are out to get them and they put down their weapon. That's carelessness. I can't have men in my army that, that are careless like that. We've got to be very careful in the day and time in which we live to be on our meds, as it were. We cannot be careless. We have fought too hard and too long to get here. And we can't afford to slip up and let something happen that will take the victory away or taint the victory or create such scandal that it will take us years to rebuild again. We haven't got time to rebuild again. We got to get it right. The Lord said, send them home. I can't work with them. They're too appetite driven. Just because they're thirsty, they duck their head. They're not even looking for the enemy. Look at those who are holding on to their swords as they drink and they are watching out when he got the conk. There were only 300 men. And the Lord said, with the 300 will I save. I would save using the 300. Get your pictures and go down by a certain valley. I know where they are. I want you to break the pictures and I want the people to shout and say the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Most of them wouldn't mind saying the sword of the Lord, but and of Gideon, that's not a very good taste in the mouths of many of God's children. They give praise to God, but they give no honor to Gideon. Mm. God and Gideon. You can't love God and disregard Gideon. It's God and Gideon. God is Gideon's God and Gideon is God's man. It's God and Gideon. Come on now. Talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. It's God and Gideon. Yeah. We've got to learn. We've got to learn that God doesn't work in isolation, that he works with men, that we are co-workers yeah. together with God. And with the yeah. 300 going to where they had to go to, raising up the light and breaking the pictures, making noise that reverberated across the corridors of that valley. The echo that was heard when they shouted the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. The enemy thought they were surrounded and started to fight against each other. Your enemies will be put in a state of confusion and those who have planned your demise and have orchestrated great plans as to how they would bring you down, they would watch in amazement as you get a desired result. It is yes. the season of the desired result. Amen. It is the day of the desired result. It is the moment of the desired result. Reverend, how can you be so bold and talk so brash? Yes, I got a God who will make it happen and his name yes. will get the glory out of this. The Lord will afford you and me the desired result, the, the result that we were desirous of and that result Glory that to God. ducking and hiding from us is playing hide and go seek from us. We are going to be able to say, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I've, I've caught you. you. You're not going anywhere. The game is over, and I won the game. You've been hiding and hiding, but I have sought you out. Here I come. Here I come to stay today. Glory to God. The desired result. What, what result are you desirous of? I don't want the small one. I desire to have a pair of shoes. And those small things, you can get that later on. I want you to put down today the biggest desire of your heart. That you know you don't you you don't have what it takes to make this thing happen. That's the one I'm talking about. You can't be an apostle and fight small fights. You got to pick the ones that you can't win, so that when you win, you know who won the fight. It was the Lord's doing, marvelous in a cabo. That's right. Amen. <laughs> yes, it is the day of the desired result. It is the hour of the desired result. It is the moment of the desired result. It is the season of the result that you desire. You have come to the place of advantageous connection, to the day of approval, to the time when you get assistance and support, to your hour of preferential treatment, to being friendly, regarded by all and sundry, 
to have kind acts done to you and to have the goodwill of God and men erupt, 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 erupt. Jesus erupt. Name. In the name of Jesus, that day has come. That hour is here. That day is now. Today, today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. I got a word from God, and I'm bold enough to make it, to declare it unto all and sundry. I've got a word from God, and if it is God's word, then God's action will follow up. I'm not trying to have no hype up in here. I know I heard from God, and I'm saying it loud and saying it strong. Yes. The day of your desired result has come. And we do not want you to put forward any tiny itty bitty prayer. We want the impossible ones, the ones that That's just. Right. We want you to be broke and looking to purchase two properties. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking All about. Right. God, be to God. It's got to be a God sized, heaven sent advantage. And God's miracles are not small. So get it in your mind. Get it in your mind right now. I'm talking about today. I'm about to pray. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, your goodwill and the goodwill of men, kind actions on God's part and the part of men, friendly regard from God and man is now the season that we walk in, that we will be shocked with surprise again and again at how easy some things happen that we thought would take years and decades and they took weeks and moments. We agree for preferential treatment to find us and to not leave until it has dumped every ounce that it is supposed to dump on us. Yes, preferential treatment is here. I am being preferred. I am the preferred one. I'm the chosen one. I'm the one they're looking for. Favor is looking for me. I'm over here, yeah. I'm here. Yes, <laughs> assistance and support will come from all corners of the globe. From them that you know and them that you don't know. People that you thought were broke will bless you so big that you'll be shocked. You have to look at them a second time. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Boaz will emerge from all over the place. Desirable men of God and women of God to the glory of God. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. approval, approval. Where there was disapproval, now there is approval. Where there was scorn, now there is high respect. That season has come. We break all barriers. We break all iron chains. We break all brassy heaven. We break all iron earth under our feet. We break down doors. We break down walls. We break down gates. Jeez. Lift up your head, though ye gates. And be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and let the king oh, of Jesus. Glory come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. He is this king of glory. And he has come to battle and to break down the, the yeah. gate basin and to break down the walls of confinement and containment and to cause unusual, unexpected, unimaginable sizes of blessings to come to us and to come into our control to the glory of God. Yes, we have been approved. We have been approved. We are the recipients mm -hmm. of divine mm -hmm. approval. You have been approved. I have been approved. We have been approved. Yes, the word is working for me has been approved and blessings yes. will come to it. Blessings will come by the truckloads. Yes. 18 yes. wheelers will stop to yes. dump off blessings. Yes. Amen. Yes. 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 In yes. Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, man, come on. Mm. Come on, Jesus, come on. You got to do this. Your name is at yes. stake. Yes. You're yes, Lord. I have told the people very, very mm. <laughs> <laughs> approval is here, man. It's here. It's here. It's here. Yes. Grant the advantage. Grant your children the advantage. Put them, put us in advantageous positions, in advantageous yes, connections. Lord. Give us the edge. Give us the edge. Give us the edge. Give us the advantage. Let the results be the ones that we desire. I have fully preached your word. I have obediently done what you said to do. Define favor. I had done the subject on my life. The Lord said, one thing you have not done, you have not told them what favor is. 
You have slipped up on that. I want you to give them the definition. I want you to give them a biblical illustration. And then I want you to pray. If you obey me, I will show you what I can do. So you are in a good place. Those of you that are watching, you say, Rev, you sound arrogant when you say things like that. Yes, I know. But when I get a word from God, I don't hold back nothing. I ain't scared of nobody. I'm not afraid of impossible. Impossible is nothing when you got a word from God. Impossible is nothing when you got a rhema from God. Impossible is nothing when you have fully obeyed God. There is a boldness that you get yes. when you know you did exactly what God said. You know what's going to happen. You don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen. But this one is going to happen quick. And it's not only is it going to happen quick, it's going to last and last and last yes. and, last and yes. last and last and last. I'm giving you a hint. I'm giving you a hint as to how long mm. it will last. It will last mm. and last and last and last and last and last and last. I'm giving you a hint as to how many years it's going to last. Yes. It's going to last yes. and last and last and last and last and mm -hmm. last and last. Yes. And then whatever must test it will come. But by then, we would have fortified ourselves. And we have gotten enough sense to know that God has placed us in an advantageous position. And we are not going to let it slip. We're not going to let it slide. We are going to brilliantly steward all of the blessings and benefits that have come to us, that has come to us in a season of the desired result. In Jesus' mighty name. And so let me thank you for this opportunity. Let me thank you for your time. And let me ask that today, if you have never shared a message, this one you must share. Mm -hmm. You must share this one so that it can yes. fly go to the ends of the earth. And people of God who have been stymied and held in check and kept at a certain place and at a red light and are in holding positions, they will bust out and break out and break forth and break loose. And watch impossible things keep happening and happening. It was interesting when I saw that picture of the man with a hammer breaking the I am. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that can preach. That's a picture sermon right there, if anything was. Yeah. God bless you. The boom is out. Wow. Well, Apostle, you, you, you came into my prayer closet and you pulled out all the things that I wrote down and how I wrote it word for word and uh you spoke about the, the blessing outlasting us and oh how we need that that after we have left this earth generational that that, that people that that blessing no matter how they try to spend it no matter how they try to it it just would not go away it just sticks like glue and keeps multiplying and that's the kind of generational blessing that we're looking for, that even everyone who attaches themselves to our bloodline, even them will become blessed and highly favored. And so today it, 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 it's right up. This is the kind of message that you do not, when the camera is off, you keep, you, you start running. <laughs> <laughs> you start running around the place and shouting and screaming because it's right up there. It's, it's the heart of what we want for God to do. We have broken out from our, our cultural barriers and all of the limitations that we have had. And we realize that we cannot do the exploits for God unless we see a favor from God that we have never seen before. And we have big things to do for God. We got the mm. great mountains to build for God. And we need, we need it all. We need it all. We, we don't want limitations in this thing. No, we no, want no. it all. We got people to bless. We got people to multiply. We got people to bless who are not born as yet. And we have the resources to do it. And so today, I receive it all. I receive it all. And if it, if it doesn't happen to anybody else, I'm telling you, it will happen to me. And it has begun to happen to me. I am getting selfish today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Sometimes you just need to grab a hold of it, put it in your pocket, stuff it all over you. Just get it down inside of you because 
Oh yeah, put it on every pocket you can find. You stuff it all there, wrap it up in your hair. Do, just ladder yourself over with it because we are in that season where it's it's like God is telling you to do so many great things. And you're looking at what you have and it's like, God, and this is it. This is it. And so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that awesome, awesome, awesome word. Powerful word. Ivana, would you like to say anything? I don't think there's much left to be said. Mm. It's indeed a powerful, powerful word. Good understanding brings favor. Amen. Amen. And, you know, even as we all have our divine allotment, it's essential to have that good understanding or else we will waste what God has given to us. Absolutely. You will abuse it. So really Amen. important message, Amen. really timely word. Thank you Absolutely. so much, Apostle. It's wow. all right. Wow. Amen. So we're sitting here, two daughters of the Apostle just receiving from you. And we just give God praise and thanks for your life. And we thank God for where he's taking you. Um, you are that kind of person that you, like, you, you, you know, you never say die. You never say die. And um, uh, I can see you in the next five years just uh, expanding and, and growing out. And, and, and we look at it and say, well, yeah, right here on the word is working for me. He said some things. And from here on, things just yeah. kaboom. And so we, we give God <laughs> praise and thanks that we could be a witness to something that, um, that is major in the kingdom of God and it's happening right now for all of us. Thanks to all of yeah. you for watching the word is working for me broadcast. Uh, we are excited about what God is doing in this time and in this season. It's global. It's a tsunami flowing out from the kingdom of God, a move of God like never before. And we are super excited and we are ready. They say, oh, you have to run with the Holy Ghost. Well, we are running with him. He has given us wings to fly with him. And okay, we are sword. energized and ready to flow, ready to run. So. Uh, thank you all for watching. Ivana, you want to uh, just bless the people before you go? Uh, just greet them and then we'll say our goodbyes. Certainly. Thank you so much for coming out. It was wonderful, a wonderful time with you. Thank you so much for tuning in with us. Pray that God would direct your paths this week. Commit all that you put your hands to do to him. Amen. 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 Thanks again for watching and thank you. Apostle for a mighty, mighty word that will continue to uh, resonate and transform lives. We give God praise and thanks for you and your wonderful family and for Sister Sharon. Amen. All that she's doing in the background, your ministry in uh, Canada and the ministries that you have uh, birthed around the world. May God continue to bless the works of your hands. And uh, may he cause exponential growth as you have preached today. Uh, the impossible happening and men and women giving praise to God for what he's doing in your life. We thank God. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow. God bless. And, uh, God bless blessed. you. Take care now. All right. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.